right, so let's go ahead and start with question one here. And they are asking about a hash. So if we go to our data source here, pc.eo1, and we view the summary information for it, and just scroll down a little bit, there is our MD5 hash right there. And if you look at the answer choices, that should match, which is the verification hash I'm pretty sure they're referring to there because there isn't one on the page itself. So we'll move on to number two. What is the operating system? Now, thankfully, that's really easy here. Operating system information is all you need with autopsy and you can see we have system and software as options. Software is going to be your operating system. System is what that is actually running on. It's the physical hardware. So we click on software and down in our little viewing window here, we've got Microsoft Windows XP and that's our answer. Next, if we go to number three, they want to know when this was installed. Well, it's right here, date slash time. That's uh, 0819 of 2004, and we've even got a time. Next up, we have a question about time zone. You might think that that would be under operating system information or something like that here, but actually it is the data source once again, but this time you right click it and click properties and there we have america slash chicago which it may or may not use those same words for it but if you look it up whatever it tells you should be gmt minus five which matches the actual time zone that it says in the answer key next up we're going to look at the registered owner which you might recall we actually already saw. That is also under the operating system information module that outputted it for us. And it's Greg Shart, which is the guy that it mentions in the scenario itself. As for the computer account name, we're gonna want to go to the operating system system information here, because this is about the computer itself. And this is where we have it here. It's this in dash one a nine and so on. This is the service count that manages the system itself, like the hardware drivers and so forth. That way you don't need a user account to be logged on in order for the system to start up. Number seven, they ask us about the primary domain name. They're talking about the domain that the system is on, the network. So we look under operating system information system where we already are and domain, and you can see it's blank on this one. So we're going to find this information through the registry, which you can find just fine through autopsy. However, it's a little bit easier and teaches you a little bit more to go through Registry Explorer. So we'll do this in the Registry Explorer section of this walkthrough that comes after this. Uh, same with question eight with the last recorded computer shutdown date and time. Uh, for now though, I'll show you under File Metadata tab in the viewing window here, it shows you where it's actually getting all of its information from. Uh, it Autopsy runs on the Sleuth Kit, which is a command line tool that has been around for a very long time. And this is just putting it into a nice graphical form for us. But the original command line information is still here for you to get under file metadata. And the next few questions here are about accounts. And luckily, Autopsy has a module for that as well, operating system user account. So let's take a look at number nine. They want to know how many accounts are there in total. Click on this and you can see them all right here. Uh, the number is different in the answer key than if you just counted these all up because these first three are not being counted. You can see that their user IDs are different. Uh, those are system accounts and they're gonna work behind the scenes a lot more than these other ones. So that's how they've chosen to count it basically. 
Next up is number 10. We've got the account name of the user who mostly uses the computer. And if you take a little scroll down all of these columns, you'll notice that under date accessed, only one of them has ever actually logged in. And they've done it 15 times if you look at the count. So that's a pretty good indicator that Mr. here is our biggest one. And if you look at the path, it's actually Mr. Evil. It just cuts it off because of the special characters there. So there are other ways to make sure that this is actually the only user that's doing anything on here. First off, we can take a look at web history. That makes sense, right? I mean, whoever's on the web is going to be the one using it most likely. We don't see any user in, oh, actually we do have Mr. Evil up here. But if you look down at source file path, you'll also see it's under Mr. Evil's documents and settings. And if you keep scrolling, you'll see it's all Mr. Evil or just, uh, yeah, so that's what I was trying to say earlier. Some of them don't have a username over in this column, but under source file path, they still are a part of Mr. Evil's documents and settings. Sorry about that. Next, you can also look at shell bags. Now, you may not know what shell bags are. Basically, they are a way for the computer to retain information about the windows and files that you open. If you last opened your documents and settings folder and you sorted it by uh, file type, then there's a shell bag that's invisibly in that folder and it's going to retain that information so that it's still sorted like that the next time you use it. However, even if you didn't know what a shell bag was, you can take a look at these and pretty well infer if you look at the file path, once again, we've got Mr. Evil, and it's looking under something called ntuser.dat, which we'll cover later. But if you keep going, it's all Mr. Evil. He's the only one using this computer at all, once again. Uh, there is one more thing we can look at, and I know we know the answer already by this point, but it is worth knowing about MRU lists. So we're looking under recent documents here, and MRU list stands for most recently used, and that's what this is using. Uh, LNK files are a part of that. I'll explain them a bit more later, but they're basically just files to mark where something is at so that the file system can get back to them more easily. And you can see that the recent documents, the source file path, once again, is going to be Mr. Evil for all of those. So those are just a few of the ways that you can identify the user that is using this the most. Obviously, pretty much everything is going to lead you back to him on this computer with the way it's going. Next up, we've got question 11 here, which we already pretty much covered. It's asking who logged in last, and if you go back to these user accounts here, you can see Mr. Evil logged in last, obviously, since no one else ever has. Question 12 asks us basically to tie the name Greg Shart, who we suspect is Mr. Evil, to the Mr. Evil account. So uh, it instructs us to do this with a keyword search, which you can do up in the top right here, and I've already done it. You could choose to do a substring match, but uh, I decided since they've given it to us, let's just go for exact match, keep it narrow. First couple of results here are in unallocated space. You can see little previews of what they are. They're kind of cryptic. It just tells us that somewhere in space that has long since outlived its usefulness, this guy's name is coming up, but there's not a lot around it that really tells us exactly what's going on. Uh, there are actually some hints here. If you look closely, subkey software, look at LAN. So software is one of the keys of the registry and we'll talk about it later. Look at LAN is a program that's about to come up in just a second here. So I won't bother going into details too much. We've got something that says that Greg Shart is the registered owner and it's a log for application data. Uh, but there's some easier ways to figure that out. I'm sure you could look more deeply into what exactly this Dr. Watson thing is, but this irunin.ini file 
is probably going to be the easiest thing. If you look at it, at its location, it is under that look at LAN application, and it has Greg Shart as the registered owner. And if you look down here, documents and settings, all of these are set under Mr. Evil. So somebody registered this under this guy's real name, not exactly a pro hacker move. Uh, and assuming that someone else didn't use this guy's computer and name it after him, it's fairly damning evidence. So that's going to help us out quite a bit there. And then we've got a uh, setup log from Look at LAN as well, but we pretty much got what we needed. Software, once again, that is the registry key. And uh, we can't pull a whole lot from that, but it does say registered owner is Greg Shart app event.evt. .evt files are Windows event logs, so they're probably pretty trustworthy. And that lists Greg Shart as the registered owner with the username Mr. Evil. And this was while he was using Internet Explorer. So we've got quite a bit of information there, and this is actually from Windows, so it seems maybe a little bit more reliable than that look at LAN thing. Uh, the operating system artifact is pretty much just what we pulled with uh, this module over here, operating system user account. There's not a whole lot to it other than it tells us that uh, Autopsy pulled it out of this software key. You can see which tool it was actually using, iStat. Uh, that's just a command line tool. You don't have to worry too much about it. And Red Dripper is another tool that's been around for a very long time, probably not going anywhere. And it's uh, coming up with some of the same results right there. Next up, we are looking for network cards that are on this computer. So if you bothered looking into what Look at LAN is, which you probably should if it's going to be a piece of evidence tying Greg Shart to Mr. Evil. Uh, it is for network monitoring. And so in its configuration, it's pretty likely that it might have something about that. And since we're already here, it seems like a pretty good source. So let's just scroll back up to the top and see what configurations it has. We have an IP address. That's a good sign. And then LAN NIC. NIC stands for Network Interface Card. And this is actually a MAC address right here. So you can look for a MAC address lookup tool online. And if you search that one, you'll see that this uh, represents a Zircom spelled with an X network interface card. Uh, there are actually two on here, so this is one of the answers. We'll use Registry Explorer later to show you the other one, uh, but that's question 13 for now. For question 14, you'll notice that we already found our answer. Here is our IP and MAC address, so we'll move on. Obviously, those things can be found in the registry and elsewhere, but that's a pretty good answer right there. Question 15, we also already answered using this INI file and a lookup of the MAC address. The only new information I have for you here is that it says that the first three hex characters of the MAC address report what the vendor of the card is. Keep in mind that because these are hex characters, uh, one hex character is represented by two ASCII characters. So uh, that's going to be six of those first numbers and or letters off of this address here. Just keep that in mind. Question 16 is yet another pretty simple one. They're just asking for installed programs that might be used for hacking. So we will go over to our installed programs module, which seems fairly obvious. You can see we have a column for program name over here, and there's 32 different options. If you just go through and you start Googling these or save yourself some time, I guess, and look at the answer sheet and just make sure you've got them all, uh, there are a number of different programs in here that could be used for hacking, seven in total by my count but they, I think, only list six on the answer key. 
Next up, question number 17 asks us to find Mr. Evil's SMTP email address. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. And what's important about this question is they're not asking for their web-based email. They're asking for the email that actually persists on this computer like Outlook or some other agent. So there's going to be like four different ways that you can find this, but only one of them is going to be really direct. So the first thing we're going to look at is just under accounts email, because, you know, if it found his account on here, that'd be really useful. However, if you look at these, EDU probably isn't going to be him. Uh, and if you start looking at the sources here, these are under my documents, footprinting. These are readme files that came with one of this guy's hacks. So that's not going to be it. And if you look under email messages, you just have the same two things again. Uh, they're not really related to this guy in particular. Next thing I tried was a keyword search. And if you go up to keyword lists, uh, sorry, so you click on keyword lists, not keyword search. I misspoke a little bit, but it already has this regular expression search for you with email addresses. So you just check that search and it'll take a minute because it's searching the whole disk for anything that's an email address, which as you might expect, returns a lot of results. And you can see that uh, a lot of them are gonna be in places that likely aren't gonna represent this guy's email address. So you could look through it for a while and eventually you will see the answer in here under this guy's ntuser.dat file. That would be a pretty good clue if you happen to know what that is. We'll cover that in the registry section later. Who knows me at sbcglobal.net is the right answer but uh, there's a much easier way to get to it still. I also looked at web bookmarks, but like I said, I realized this is not asking for his web-based email, but it does give you some hints as to where he might actually have an email address because he's been on Hotmail before, although these might just be the ones that uh, came with Internet Explorer already as bookmarks, so maybe not so useful. Finally, though, if you think about it, we're looking for something that's persistent on here, which means we're looking for a installed program. And we already found earlier that he has Forte Agent and Outlook Express as uh, mail programs that are installed on here. Now, this doesn't really tell us a whole lot here, and it's coming from this software registry thing but you know where programs are installed on here already. So we go back up to our data source here. We look under program files and here we have agent as in Forte agent. So we expand that and look at its data folder, which is where it's gonna store its INI file, which as you know, is the configuration file. And there it is, agent.ini. And if you look, SMTP username, who knows me at sbcglobal.net. So that's really the most direct way for us to do that. Next up, they want us to find in number 18, the NNTP or news server for Mr. Evil. And if you start looking through this as well, you will eventually stumble upon there is a setting for that as well. So probably the easiest way to find it within this file is just going to be to click within it, control A, control C. Now you've got the full thing copied. You can take it into a text editor and uh, you can see if you search the word news, you would find it right here. It doesn't actually say NNTP, but uh, you know, just think about keywords.